Hey, this is going to be uh, just some basics on how to use the White's MXT. And this is my metal detector. I've had, I don't know how many detectors over the years, quite a few. And uh, so let's show you number one. Um, if you get lost out in the woods, you can't figure out how to use it, you can read the directions on the bottom. <laughs> Is that all I'm going to tell you? No. I'm going to show you some different things on it. I mean, I've been using white detectors for, I don't know, 20 to 30 years, I guess, somewhere in there. 20 years pretty much constantly. Then I had an old, I think it was a 6000 DI Pro from back in the 70s, back when I was younger, just kind of kicking around. And so, yeah, this is basically a relic and coin detector. It'll also detect for gold. You can use it as a prospecting detector, but I'll, quite honestly, you know, I can't recommend it as a prospecting detector because it's just not going to have the sensitivity that's needed to find the small stuff that we're going to be looking for these days. So if you want a good gold detector, go out and buy it, you know, the new Gold Master, you know. The White's MXT for prospecting, you know, larger nuggets. You're not going to find the, the real, real small ones at any great depth of this because it's not designed for that. It's designed for relics, it's designed for coins, and this is what we're going into. Okay, basically you have these two locks up here, I mean the two switches. Um, this one here being your most important, this is your automatic ground balance. And what this does, this is what allows the machine to tune itself to the ground, so you want to run it in ground position most of the time, unless you're like at the ocean where I was in the San Francisco video, then I had it up on salt. but. You want to run it in ground position, that way it'll go ahead and track and adjust itself and balance itself out with the ground. If you're in really hot ground or where it doesn't want to run very well, then you can move it up into the lock position, which locks it in place, but it won't automatically ground balance anymore, which is, you know, just not preferred most time. And I've had to run it that way many a times, but, but not too often. Okay, then down here you have your threshold is what it's called, but this is basically, this is your volume switch. And what you want to do with this is turn it down all the way down to where you just can't hear it then turn it back up to where you can just hear the faintest hum especially when using a pair of headphones um, your discrimination basically this is going to discriminate out different metals and it says right on here uh, nails nickels pull tabs or nickel pull tabs and so on to where at max saturation or max SAT um, it could pretty much be grounded out everything, so you don't want to run it up too high. You want to run it as low as possible. With no discrimination, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between nails and so on. It has this little arrow right here between nail and nickel, and uh, nickel and pull tab over here. It has this over here, so you know you're going to run it in one of these presets if you want. But I, what I like to do is tune it to the ground I'm in and run it as far down as possible when prospecting because I'm going to be digging pretty much everything. Then this here is your balance, your ground balance. It says it's your, they call it your gain, but still basically this is your, this is your manual ground balance. It's going to still balance here, but you want to be able to balance the coil on the ground to where it's getting the most penetration. <coughs> they have it set up here, and so we're going to run it wherever it takes to get our coil to where it is either when I'm raising up and lowering the coil I want it to be either level going up and down or slightly increasing as it goes down for just a little bit better depth okay and we got coin and jewelry relic or prospecting I'm not going to be doing any prospecting we're going to run relic we'll just be using coin and jewelry today the outside I want to go ahead and just actually I like I like getting my square nails too so I'd run this down here myself but we're going to run it, you know, somewhere in the middle of the two to three, three to four range, you know, for general. And we're going to end up balancing the detector. So that's your four. This is your volume. That's all this is. We're going to turn this knob. I turned it on when I turned on the gain, so it's actually on. So now you can hear it. So what I want to do when I have a pair of headphones on is turn it down until I just can't hear it, then bring it back up to where I can hear it just a little. And that's fine. For today, we're going to run a little bit higher, so that way we can hear everything. 
and then you have a discrimination switch up here on the back of your meter. Now this is going to tell you if you got coins and jewelry, just like just like it says right here on the front. Read the front of this. Coins for coin and jewelry mode. It's going to discriminate between iron. It's going to show you if it's iron or foil, or a quarter nickel dime, fifty cent piece, and so on. Um, in relic mode, basically it just tells you it's different stuff. You're going to have small buttons. You're going to have bullets and medium buttons, buckles. It's going to tell you what it is. We're running for coins today because we're probably going to have more coins out here than we know what to do with along with more garbage we can possibly imagine like pull tabs and everything else and that's it it's pretty pretty simple pretty easy pretty much can't go wrong and we're running today with a regular standard the standard coil the uh, I guess is what it, the Eclipse 950 whatever that is it's just the standard coil that comes with it I do have the prospecting one too but this one here works just fine for everything I need to do I don't usually go out and do a lot of nugget hunting with this but when I do I do put on the nugget coil. Now you'll notice on here, on my detector here, I'm going to go, that what I've done is I have a straight pull, okay, on the cable coming from the coil up the line as far as I can up to here. Now what this is, is just Velcro because I want to have the, where I start coiling the wires, this is what I learned years ago from I can't remember his name. He wrote that book Zip Zip, you know, for the old VSAT and the uh, the gold detectors. Is you want to have when you start coiling it to get your to get it as tight as possible. You want it as far away from the coil as possible. Well, this works pretty good for me between here and here. So I have this one right here, this set of Velcro. I have that one there to hold it in place, and I have one right back here that holds it here. And from here into the machine. Okay, this is pretty, this is nice and tight. It just barely fits in there and tightens down. And that way, when I go to break it apart, um, I have to break these two pieces apart. So what I do is I just separate it right here and then pull it apart in half and it goes right back into my case. Enough on that. Let's get to prospecting. Okay, on the trigger, basically it's two position, okay, or three. Um, this is your standard tracking mode when it's in the center like this. You have first position which is locked which uh, in coin and relic it's going to lock out, naturally lock out your pull tabs which was the second inner arrow on your uh, on your adjustments over there. It pretty much you put the, you lock it out that's what it does. Um, in the center mode it, it tracks when you pull a trigger in it switches over and gives you the depth of the target. Okay. So in this mode, it's going to tell you what it is. On the either in the lock mode or the tra or the tracking mode, it's going to tell you what the target is. Then you're going to locate it, and in order to pinpoint it and get the depth, you pull it in. I like my armband on tight, not too tight, just comfortable. And in a lot of the videos that I've seen. <coughs> People are sitting there swinging their detector like this. Now, see how it's doing that? They're kind of going up at, on the ends. What that's doing is pulling it away from the ground to where you, it's not going to get the signal. So what you want to do is adjust it to where it's long enough to where it's comfortable, then pass it over to the ground as close to the ground as you possibly can. Well, I'm seeing stuff in front of me without even doing anything in their pull tabs. Let me see if it's a pull tab or something else. I don't even have it turned on yet. <laughs> yeah, I got a pull tab in front of me. So we're going to go ahead and go over these pull tabs. And let me see if I can do this and hold on to the camera and everything at the same time. So remember, It's not heavy. I mean, I, I got a backpack with a strap that I got from my mine lab, but I can hook on down here that takes the weight of the detector too, and that really helps out when you're going out all day. But this detector is as light as you can be, and this is the sweeps that you want to use. You want to keep it level to the ground, your coil at all times. On the ground or just above the ground. Just above the ground is preferable, but when it's not clear, you get what you get. 
right, anyway, um, I want to make sure I have it in ground mode. So I don't want to lock it on. So first thing I want to do is make sure this is in the proper setting. You don't want it in the salt. You don't want it locked. You want it in automatic ground balancing mode. Okay. Then you want to set this over here, your coins, jewelry, or prospecting. Well, we're going to go be going for coins and jewelry. And then uh, my volume will turn on in a second. My uh, discrimination I have set for oh nickel, pull tabs, that kind of thing is going to be, it'll be finding nickels and pull tabs along with everything else. We want that. And now we're just going to turn this on. Go a little louder. Can you hear that? I hope. It's coming up a little bit, so I want to take my gain and increase it. too high. I want it level. Man, I have so much stuff right here. Right here, and I haven't done nothing here yet. But this place is so full of trash that we're going to find all kinds of stuff today. It says iron now. What I did was I pulled this trigger right here, and that's allowing me to get the, to pinpoint exactly where I did and, and give me the depth. So I'm not pulling the trigger. What that is is multiple targets. We got iron, foil, it says a quarter, probably it's all iron. Gonna be digging up junk because it says we got iron and everything in there. And like I said, there's all kinds of targets, but saying it's at four inches or so and that's just too much for this little scooper. So what I do, I'll usually have my pick or something. Okay, that's going to be over four inches. So I'm just going to take it. Spread it out. It's going to be in here somewhere. Hopefully we're just not over another new target because, like I said, this used to be a house area, so there's all kinds of stuff out here. If this doesn't pan out real quick, we're going to... Okay, I'm going to go back up to seven. Six and a half on this. And there it is. It was a pull tab. Okay, so we found a pull tab. It was down there, set at least four inches or so. So we're not discriminating pop pull tabs. That's how easy it is to find a pull tab. I mean, and here you're going to find all kinds of pull tabs and everything else. Lots of crap in here, man. Pull tab, buried. I got zinc over here.
But basically, what you're hearing is what we're looking for. Do you hear that little zip zip in there? And we got all kinds of stuff in here. Five cent ring, and what I'm, we're looking at is bullet shells. I actually got a clear quarter this time. Okay, so I'm going to pull on the trigger. Okay, so right in here, I just, I just marked it with my foot. We're going to have a quarter or something. Hopefully, it's not something else. It says it could be zinc, it could be silver.